people. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad. This is Pastor Charles McKnight. Welcome to our 7.30 p.m. Prayer is a must. Prayer call. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. I'm grateful unto God for his goodness, for his mercy and his kindness towards us. For We are certainly excited about this opportunity for us to join together. We have an amazing 6 a.m. prayer on this morning, and we're just believing that God is going to do great things. He's going to do mighty things and awesome things in, through, and around our life. And I just want to be able to start out with a word of introductory prayer. Then we're going to get into the word of God, concluding a session uh, on tonight, uh, by which we've been talking about uh, praying that the Word of God uh, becomes planted in our life and fully understanding the importance of allowing prayer that the Word will become planted and take root in our life so that we can see the production of God's Word begin to flourish and manifest the miracles of God. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy kindness and your grace towards us for your good, your God, and you're worthy to be praised. We're thankful unto you for the amazing things that you have done for us. We we love you from the depths of our soul, from the bottom of our heart. We ask you to bless this prayer tonight. There are many people tonight, God, that needs understanding and they need direction. They need answers. We're asking you tonight that you will guide us and that you will lead us and that you will divinely instruct us to be all that you want us to be. Thank you right now. Bless those tonight who are just hurting and those who are in despair. We ask you to help them tonight. And we praise your holy name for what you have done and what you will do. In Jesus' name, we pray amen and amen. I tell you what, we are so excited tonight, and I just want us to continue to be able to pray for the fabric of our country. We know there have been so many things horrifically that have happened within the last 24 hours and even further back than that. And we need prayer. Prayer is truly a must. And we're thankful unto God uh, for his graciousness and kindness. I don't even know where I would be. I don't even want to know where I would be if it had not been for prayer or having people pray for me, um, Um, past, present, and future. I just truly believe that my life and your life and our life is simply just a product of prayer. In so many instances in our life, prayer has surrounded us. Prayer has kept us. The Word of God has been spoken over us. And we're excited for the fact that the Word of God still works. And we've been talking about the importance uh, of having the Word of God planted in our life and so that Prayer takes root with the word of God that brings forth uh, the harvest and the fruit of God and the righteousness of God and the power of God being evident and prevalent in our life. And I'm just looking forward to that. But before I get into that, I'll tell you what we've been talking about, and I'm just going to reference it just for a moment. There was a prophetic warning as well as prophetic instructions that God released on July the 3rd. that he told me to share with as many people as we can. I want you to go to our YouTube channel and look up the word of the Lord. It's a short word of the Lord that has been life-changing, that has already reached many people knowing that we need this word. We need prophetic instruction. We need prophetic protection. And I urge you and every person, if you have not engaged to hear it, I challenge you to hear it, and I'm asking every person, especially who is connected to this ministry, as well as Sanctuary of Praise membership, I want you to share that word with at least 20 people. I've done my 20. I I, I, I sent it to um, nephews. I sent it to my nieces. I sent this word prophetically to relatives in New York. I'm just I'm sending it to even the younger generation primarily and us as believers and sharing that word uh, of warning, that word of instruction. And I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. I want you, uh, I've sent it to um, well over to my family members. Um, I had some of my family respond today. I thank God and they're passing it on to their children because we need a word from the Lord. We need that word to be planted. We need to be aware. We need to be alert. 
and we need to pay attention to what the Lord is saying in this end time. So I'm challenging you to join me to send it to at least 20 friends, family members, so we can get the word out of recruitment of evangelism and salvation, but most of all, adhere to what God is saying. With that being said, I've been talking about, you know, the importance of walking in prayer, but using the word of God as the primary basis to be able to make sure if we want our prayer life to be effective. One thing we don't have to worry about is when we pray, the three things that we must use to be successful in prayer. First of all, I believe that we must come to God with a sincere heart of gratefulness, having the posture of uh, being humble and being humble in our posture and our approach to God, understanding that he is the God of the universe and we are to fear and reverence him. So when we come to God, first of all, when we pray to God, we need to pray to him with a sincere heart and a posture of humility to be able to come to him boldly with confidence of who he is and not so much who we are. The second thing, we must have faith. We must believe and trust God that we're going to have an effective prayer life. The third thing we must do is we must pray in the authority of God's word. And when we pray in the authority of God's word, then that means that we are in alignment with God because God will keep his word forever true. The Bible says in Matthew 24 and 35 that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So it's the most solid thing that we have. It's the most dependable fact because we fully understand that the book of John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when we pray in the authority of God's Word, we're praying in truth, we're praying in authority, and we're praying in the foundation of the will of God, because he will not contradict what his Word had already said. The key now is to make sure that we become planted praying that the enemy can't just come and snatch or pluck up the word of God or choke out the word of God through circumstances. A direct enemy of the word of God is fear. It's becoming visibly and emotionally disturbed when circumstances happen. On our prayer call on this morning, I dealt with how do we respond in prayer when we've received bad news or not good news? Do we panic? Do we stress out? Or do we look for other answers outside of the word of God? I told you earlier, John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So many times when we go through those dark places, or we try to navigate through those seasons of life, or those circumstances of life, and we will all have them. There is no doubt in my mind that every one of us, I'm telling you something, there's been seasons um, personally that I've had to go through. There's been days that where the nights were dark and even the days were cloudy and dark. And you're trying to walk uh, by faith and not by sight. And many times when you're trying to walk by faith and not by sight, in other words, I got to shut off, got to put on the blinders. And think about a horse race. Many times they horse, they'll put on blinders so the horse can be able to keep looking ahead and not worrying about who's running next to him or not worrying about what's going on behind him and to prevent things from getting in his vision so he can stay focused on the race. So many times when we're going through life, we need direction and with those dark places that we're going through. And I think of the word of God that is read from in Psalm 119 and 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. In other words, those places that we don't know exactly how to walk and where to walk, and a light unto my path. He gives us direction because of his word. And we got to understand that that word must be planted. It must be a word that's not only planted, but here's what I do a lot of times. Repeat it. 
I'll decree it and repeat it again. Because so many times you got to understand that faith comes by hearing. And we got to understand that when we hear the word of God, it gives us confidence. Then we meditate on that word. That also brings us to the point of being planted. So when we pray, we pray with confidence that heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word is true. So I can count on the word. The Bible says in Psalm 30, 5 and 6, every word of God is pure. So there is no, there is no uh, contamination in the word. There is no infection in the word. There's nothing infectious in the word. He's a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Isn't that powerful that the word of God is pure? He's a shield. In other words, the word of God is protection. It covers us. All we have to do to make sure that we're covered in the word of God is put our trust in him. Verse 6 says, add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. In other words, the word of God doesn't need nothing extra. You don't have to add nothing to it. You don't have to twist it. You don't have to try to make it seem like that's why so many times we have to be careful how we try to put so many different uh, things on the word. The word of God is true. He said, by his stripes, we are healed. It says this, that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And we need to understand by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. We don't need to twist that. You need to understand that the Lord is our light, Psalm 27, and our salvation. We need to trust the word of God is pure. It's not, it has not been violated. It is pure all by itself. And that's why tonight I want you to grab this. If there's nothing else we can count on, we can count on the word of God. If there's nothing else we can go all in on, we can go all in on the word of God. God is not a man that he should lie. I'm in numbers now. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll make it good. If he promised, the Bible says he's not slack concerning his promise, or he's not weak concerning his promise. What he promised, what God promised, some of the things he promised us. He promised us that he will supply all of our needs. He promised us that our Heavenly Father already knows what we have need of before we act. He promised us that he'll never leave us and he will never forsake us. He promised us that he was going to look out for us and be that guide and be our deliverer. He promised us that he'll watch over us and give angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways to where no evil shall befall us and we're living in an evil world and no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. He promised us. And that's what we need to understand, and that's how we need to pray. We have to pray with confidence, not arrogance, not entitlement. But we have to pray with confidence, but yet humility. We come to him boldly, but we also reference who he is. So what we need to do is According to Colossians 3 and 16, I'm, I'm just, my God, I love this scripture. And I want you to catch this. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I find it very interesting that it used the expression of richly. When you think about something that's richly, you ever ate or have eaten a piece of 
a rich chocolate chocolate cake, and sometimes you you eat it. I mean, if it's double chocolate, I mean, there's some places I've gone, and I'm telling you something. I'm telling you, yeah, Cheesecake Factory got a, a double chocolate cake. Lord have mercy, that thing is simple against uh, the stomach area. Lord have mercy, Jesus. And the thing about it is, is when you eat it, it's chocolate on top of chocolate inside of chocolate. It's rich. You don't have to wonder what it is. You know it's chocolate. It's double chocolate and then some. Some of y'all are getting hungry. I sense that in my spirit. And it's so rich until when you eat it, it's just chocolate. And matter of fact, your 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 teeth become chocolate. Your tongue becomes chocolate. Just chocolate. And if you talk, you're gonna talk chocolate. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I I feel all I feel this for somebody right now. So when the word of God gets in you richly, that means you talking the word. That means the word of God is in your mouth. So that negativity can't overtake the richness of the word. That word so rich into you and, and you process that word and you got swallowed the word and you got digested the word in such a way to where when the devil tries to back you down or back you up or make you believe something different, you're so rich in the word until the word has to come out because the word has gotten in your mouth. Let me finish reading Colossians 3 and 16. It says, let the word of God dwell in you or become planted in you richly. Then it says, in all wisdom. In other words, when you use the word of God, you're using wisdom. Because you wise when you understand what the word of God is. Remember, I told you in Proverbs 30, 5 and 6, it says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. It's so richly into you until you, if you get a negative report from the doctor. Before you become overwhelmed with the doctor's report and start trying to make funeral arrangements, you begin to say, the word of God says, by his stripes I'm healed. And I'm going to repeat it. And I'm going to decree it. Because it's rich in me. I'm overtaken by it. I stand on it. I believe it. I decree it. I declare it. And guess what else? I expect it. Because I'm using wisdom when I trust God. I'm using wisdom when I pray according to the word of God. I'm using wisdom when I rebuke the devil with the word of God. Because he said, God told me in his word, whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever I loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I'm using wisdom. It says teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. In other words, when the word of God gets in you richly, we start admonishing one another, which is to encourage one another, which is to support one another by the word of God. I remember as a little boy, my dad was pastoring a church in Raleigh, Florida. Church, the, the, the community didn't even have a red light. Small farm community. About 60 miles one way out of Gainesville. We used to load up in our father's car, our whole family. And I'm telling you something, that community wasn't wealthy people. But they were good people that trusted the word of God. And sometimes the saints, many of the saints in that community didn't even have cars, they would walk to church. Church was side the main highway. 
community. Sometimes they live not even down paved roads, walking down the street on dusty street. In many cases, woods on on uh, both sides of the highway. We'll walk to church in the sunset in the evening. And then after church, it's pitch black. And and anybody have ever lived in a community like I have growing up as a child when there are no street lights? I'm talking about pitch black to where you can't see your hand in front of your face at night. But those saints will come to church praising God. Didn't have an air condition in the church. I feel like I'm telling the story, which I am. Didn't have an air condition in the church. Used to have to let up the windows and telling you they would have church and praise God. And some of the saints brought towels to church, praise towels, because they knew they was going to sweat it out up in there. But when they began to admonish one another, encourage one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs. Those saints would get around each other and begin to say, God, go do this. One family have a problem in their family. Boy, the saints will come together and use the word of God. Then on the way back home at night, walking down dusty roads, sometimes my dad will, will go and, and uh, take some of the saints who even live further. We used to have to wait in, in the church. My dad had, y'all, Uber didn't just get here. Uber been here a long time. He just didn't charge. Take some of the saints back to their homes. But then some of them just say, no, Pastor Bishop, don't worry about it. We're just going to walk home. Pitch black, walking down the road, singing songs. Sounding like a siren of faith in the community. Because the saints had the word of God that was dwelt richly in their hearts. They begin to sing and they will pray. And they will have the grace in their hearts to the Lord. They knew that if God listened, he will answer. They believe if God said it, he was going to do it. We're living in a society now with all this technology and all of this advancement. If our faith can advance and upgrade like your phone, you'll be having miracles all the time. My God, talk to us, Holy Spirit. We need to ask God, and we need to do our part so that when we pray, we believe. And we pray according to the word. And you can't pray according to the word if you don't read the word, if you don't study the word, and surely if you don't believe the word. Tonight, Getting ready to pray with you. I tell you what, I'm not finished. I'm just going to cut this off. This is one uh, message that's going to be on our podcast. You need to listen to this again. Because the word of God needs to ignite you to believe, especially in this chaotic world. Especially in this dark world. Especially in this trying world to where we're seeing the world change by the minute. Before this night is over, the world can change again. First thing in the morning, the world could change again. By 12 noon, the world could change again. At midnight on Wednesday, the world can change again. But one thing that will not ever change is his word. He said, I am with you always. That's what God said, even to the end of the world. I want your faith to expand. I want your expectation to increase. We believe. And as I've been saying it for the last five days, this is Miracle Month. Something is about to take place. I believe God in our lives that we've never seen before. Because guess what? And I'm going to say it like Jesus said. There's life in the word. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace, 
for your tender mercy and your forever loving kindness. We're grateful unto you and we're thankful unto you for what you've already done. We come to you thanking you for being our God, being our keeper. Hallelujah, felt you then, Jesus. Being our shield, being our guide, and being our buckler. There's absolutely nobody like you, and it is a privilege to be able to talk to you. I am humble that I and we, as your children, can have access by faith to your word and Jesus' name to the creator of the universe. I'm humble that the same God that said, let there be light and there was light. I'm talking to that same God that took Moses and the children of Israel through the Red Sea. I'm talking to that same, and we're talking to that same God, the almighty God, the only true and living God. We bless your name. We love your name. And we believe your name. Tonight, God, with the diversity of problems, trials, and tests, I'm asking you to help us. Psalm 46 said, God is our refuge and our strength. He's our help. He's our helper in times of trouble. There are many families that are distraught. There are people that are living in fear and in despair. They feel cast down and helpless and many feel hopeless. I'm asking you to help us. I'm asking you to reign your love and your mercy and your strength. We're not going to get out of you. We're going to wait on you because your word says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I ask you now, by the mercies of the Lord, that you open the windows of heaven and pour out miracles and blessings and favor and protection that we won't have room enough to receive. I bind according to your word every demonic, satanic spirit and this force of destruction. We bind the spirit of suicide. We bind the spirit of terror, murder, and rage. We come against every generational curse and we speak deliverance. We speak victory. I pray for families that unsaved loved ones, family members and friends generationally in our neighborhoods, in our families, in our communities, in our workplace, that salvation will come nigh. We pray, God, for every confused mind and every troubled heart, every weary spirit, every dry place that you will water us with your word. Renew us, God, I'm asking you, to refresh us, strengthen us, encourage us, and give us favor. We come against the spirit of heaviness, depression and oppression, anxiety and fear. Let that healing, God, that we know that can heal all sickness, all disease, and every form of infirmity, we decree that it's healed by the blood of Jesus. God, we have thousands of requests of healing and protection and victory and answers that are needed. I ask you, God, to meet every need. I pray wherever they are, whether it's a hospital room, hospice, prison walls, alleys, homes, urgent care centers, Wherever they are, feeling abandoned, feeling lonely, feeling that they are afraid to go to sleep. I decree and I declare that this God and the God of the universe 
will send messenger angels, warring angels of protection. And God, your healing virtue, we decree that it's done in Jesus' name. Those who are overtaken and overwhelmed by grief, been blindsided by tears and fears and weariness, those who are hurting in the depths of their souls, I pray, God, that you relieve them with your comfort that only you can do and give them peace. We speak now for a divine release of resources because you are the source. We pray for protection of doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and military troops, even our streets and our communities. I come against corruption and evil in our law enforcement. We speak now, God, in Jesus' name, that the perils of evil and the corruption and the wickedness on all levels whether it's judicially or politically or economically or educationally, bind every plot and every scheme, and we speak victory and peace, purity and truth, power and victory. Reign on us a greater anointing. Reign on us wisdom and favor. Overtake what's trying to overtake us to make people not believe. I decree that the miracle working God of the mountain and the God of the valley will help us on tonight. We pray for family unity. We pray for homes. We pray that the word of God is planted. It will be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. We come against instability and unstableness and we speak peace to our thoughts. We cast down every wicked imagination every voice of negativity we come against every demonic suggestion. We decree and we declare that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we come against every warfare device. We come against every plot and scheme of Satan. And we decree, O oh God, in Jesus' name, it is brought to naught and it is defeated by the blood of Jesus and by the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, God, for allowing us to use your name as access to the Father. We thank you on tonight that you're opening new doors and you're releasing greater seasons and you're releasing greater miracles. Cancel debt, cancel lack, cancel poverty, and take us into the overflow. I pray, God, you take us from rentership to ownership. We decree and we declare right now that the latter house will be greater than the former and that your glory shall be revealed. Thank you, God, that miracles are being released and dispatched. We bind the prince of Persia. We decree that anything that tries to hinder, any trains that tries to prevent, anything that tries to stop, anything that tries to destroy the promises and the word of God, we come against the prince of Persia. We decree that in the heavens, between heaven and earth, that we are warring with this prayer, but yet we're praising and thanking you, God, that we know that the release has already come to pass. Manifest yourself speedily, mightily, and powerfully. And we thank you, God, that it's done right now. We thank you that you'll cover and protect our children from generation to generation. We thank you for legacy. We thank you for a divine inheritance. We thank you, oh God, for posterity, prosperity in your word. Not just rich or wealthy in possessions. We seek wealth of your knowledge, wealth of your word, wealth of wisdom, wealth of understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing in all that wisdom and all that getting we get an understanding. Tonight, God, wrap us with favor. Cover us with peace. Let our joy remain full. We delight ourselves in you knowing that you're going to give us the desires of our heart. We want your will to be done. We want you to be pleased with our lives, with us as servants. Because you get all the glory. We take no credit for nothing. But we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. 
cover sanctuary of praise. God, I ask you to cover me to be the vessel and the pastor that you call me to be. Cover our families. Cover my mother. Cover our children. Cover our families. Cover our hearts, our minds, and bodies from incident, accidents, or tragedy. We decree and we declare that there's a blood wall and that's a blood shield. Thank you right now as I close this prayer for the miracles that have been released and that are forthcoming now. We love your name. We praise your name. We honor your name for your good, your God, your awesome, and your worthy to be praised. Now, God, we thank you for prophetic protection. God, you've spoken some things. We heed to the warning. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. And we say yes to your word. We ask this prayer. We pray it from the depths of our soul, from the bottom of our heart, that it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I tell you what, I felt that tonight. I'm expecting miracles now, tomorrow, the rest of this month, the rest of this year, and the rest of our life. I'm not putting a limit on God. Our expectation is sure. Stay positive. Stay prayerful. Believe God. Be careful. Be led by God. Remember, he's not always in the crowd. He's going to be in his glory. Be safe, be wise. Thank you. And remember this. Make sure that the word of God remains rooted and grounded and planted in you so we can experience the harvest and the manifestation along with the plans of God. Be safe, be wise, and God bless. Pastor John, come back.